If you've been thinking about making shampoo bars and other gentle natural cleansers, you've almost certainly come across sodium cocal isothionate, also known as SCI, in your research. Wondering what it is, what it does, and if you need it? Keep watching. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are doing another ingredient deep dive, this time into sodium cocal isothionate. Think of this as the partner video for the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on this ingredient, so if you are looking for a quick written reference, please make sure you check that out. It's linked in the description box below. In this video, we are going to cover what sodium cocal isothionate is, why we use it, how to work with it, what you can use instead or substitution suggestions, and then we'll finish up with five free formulations that you can make using sodium cocal isothionate. Let's dive in. What is sodium cocal isothionate? It is a solid, gentle, natural, anionic, or negatively charged surfactant made from coconut oil. It comes in a variety of formats, like fine powder, chunkier powder, little sticks or noodles, and larger chunks. It creates really dense, velvety, lace glove lather in our formulations, and it's very versatile. The active surfactant matter is generally around 84%, with a pH of 4.5 to 6.5, though make sure you are checking with your supplier for the exact information about what you have. When you're shopping for sodium cocal isothionate, make sure the inky is so sodium cocal isothionate and doesn't have anything else in it like stearic acid or another surfactant. Why do we use sodium cocal isothionate in our formulations? SCI is included in formulations for its lather and cleansing properties. It's brilliant for creating really gentle, mild cleansers. It can be used in liquid formulations, but I think SCI really shines and does its best work in solid formulations. In solid formulations, the different formats of SCI can give different appearances to your formulations, and I think that is really neat. It really isn't terribly inclined to dissolve in water and can become unstable in hydrous formulations with a pH below 6, so if you are looking for a more water-soluble alternative, look for its cousin, sodium lauryl methyl isothionate, or SLMI. Whether or not you need SCI will depend a lot on what you want to formulate. If your main aim is to make shampoo bars and other gentle cleansing bars, I'd say yes. If you are more interested in formulating foaming bath products like bath truffles, I would recommend sodium lauryl sulfoacetate over SCI. If you're mostly interested in making liquid surfactant products, I would recommend choosing liquid surfactants or choosing solid surfactants that are more water soluble than sodium cocal isothionate. How do you work with sodium cocal isothionate? First things first, you absolutely must wear a well-fitting dust mask. A fabric mask is not enough. You really do need a high quality respirator with a rubberized gasket around your face and straps so that you can tighten it down to make it nice and snug. Dry sodium cocal isothionate becomes airborne very easily and inhaling that powder is unbelievably unpleasant. You will know immediately if your dust mask doesn't fit well enough, so make sure you invest in something high quality that won't leave you gagging while you try to make shampoo bars. When it comes to questions of how much sodium cocal isothionate to use in your formulations, the first thing you need to know is the maximum usage level. The Cosmetic Ingredient Review has concluded that SCI is safe for use in cosmetic formulations at 50% for rinse off and 17% for leave on formulations, so make sure you are below the applicable limit for whatever you're making. You will generally want to pair SCI with different surfactants, usually with different charges, for an overall milder surfactant blend. SCI is mild enough that you don't have to, but if your formulation allows for it, it's a good idea. An amphoteric surfactant like cocomidopropyl betaine is a really classic and lovely choice, but you can also pair sodium cocal isothionate with non-ionic surfactants like cocoglucoside or decoglucoside and other anionic surfactants. For example, I love pairing sodium cocal isothionate with sodium cocal sulfate so we get heaps and heaps of gorgeous, lovely, fluffy bubbles from the sodium cocoa sulfate, but have the bulk of the cleansing come from very gentle, lovely sodium cocoa isothionate. How much sodium cocoa isothionate you'll need for any given formulations is a great big quagmire of it depends. A shampoo bar will need more surfactant than a face wash will. A formulation designed to go in a foamer bottle will need less surfactant than a formulation that's not going in a foamer bottle. A formulation with lots of oil will typically need more surfactant to get a good amount of lather than a formulation that doesn't contain much oil at all. There are a lot of variables here, so I recommend looking at formulations from other formulators to see what they have done, and then just try it. That truly is the best way to see if you're getting the amount of bubbles that you want and the level of cleansing that works for your product. When making solid products with SCI, I generally like to work with it 
it as is. If the formulation you are looking at calls for a finely powdered version of SCI, but yours is in a larger format, you can run it through your DIY only coffee grinder and now voila, you also have finely powdered sodium cocal isothionate. If a formulation calls for a larger format of SCI like the noodles and you only have the finely powdered version, you are going to have to adjust the wet dry balance. The fine powder has a lot more surface area than the larger chunks, so it will absorb more liquid. So you'll need to incorporate more liquid into the formulation to get the mixture to work out. If you are making liquid products with sodium cocal isothionate, you will need to dissolve it in some of the liquid surfactants in your formulation before proceeding. It really has very little interest in dissolving in water. I once put about a tablespoon of sodium cocal isothionate in a jar with some water and then capped it and left it for about six months and it never dissolved. <laughs> Speed up the dissolving process by ensuring your sodium cocal isothionate is in as small of bits as it can be. So if you have larger chunks, run it through your coffee grinder first. Up next, combine the powdered sodium cocal isothionate with the liquid surfactants from your formulation and gently heat it in a water bath until smooth. This can take a while, so be patient and definitely don't use a microwave because that will create a surfactant volcano. <laughs> you can often speed this process along by using an immersion blender. The water content in a blend of just liquid surfactants and sodium cocal isothionate is unlikely to be high enough to really kick up much lather. So once everything is heated through, you can get in there with your immersion blender and give that a good thorough pureeing to make sure you have a nice smooth paste before continuing on. Once you've finished mixing up your formulation, make sure that the pH isn't below six. If it gets much lower than six, the sodium cocal isothionate can hydrolyze and your formulation can become unstable. Thankfully, this isn't an issue in solid cleansers like shampoo bars due to the low water content. What can you use instead of sodium cocal isothionate in your formulations? You'll need to start with a different solid anionic surfactant. Sodium lauryl sulfoacetate or SLSA is a really easy choice that should work in almost every application. This surfactant is often mistaken for SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate because of the rather similar sounding names, but they're not the same thing at all. SLSA is a much gentler surfactant and it is EcoCert certified. Sodium C14 to 16 olefin sulfonate can also work, though it does have a higher pH, so you'll probably need to check and downwards adjust the pH of your formulation. Sodium cocoa sulfate can also work, though it has a much higher pH and is a much stronger cleanser than SCI is, so you'll likely need to make some adjustments to both the pH and the concentration of the surfactant to create a similar finished formulation. For these three substitution options, I would start with a one-to-one -one swap, make the product, test it, and then make adjustments as required. If your modified version of the formulation is too strong, you'll want to use less surfactant, and if it's not cleansing enough, you'll want to use more. You'll also need to check the pH of the formulation to ensure that it is skin and or hair friendly and adjust if required. In liquid formulations, you can try using a liquid anionic surfactant instead of sodium cocal isothionate. Considerations of active surfactant matter and pH also apply here, so yeah give it a try, make it in a small batch, take lots of notes, adjust as required and have fun. You can compare all of these surfactants with my handy dandy surfactants table over at humblebeeandme.com slash surfactants. And let's wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using sodium cocal isothionate. Formulation number one is my gentle oatmeal almond body wash bar. This formulation differs from many of the solid bars I've shared using SCI because in this formulation, SCI is our only solid surfactant. The rest of the Solidity of this bar comes from a hefty dose of soothing colloidal oatmeal. This bar is wonderfully easy to make. You just knead everything together like you're making pasta dough, shape it, leave it to dry, and that is it. Our second formulation is my Frosted Cranberry Powder to Foam Facial Cleanser. Since sodium cocal isothionate is a dry solid, it blends really nicely into the powdery base of this cleanser. This gives us a cleanser that just looks like a powder until you get it wet and work it up, and then voila, bubbly magic. Our third formulation is my Chocolate Rasool Shampoo Bars. These shampoo bars blend sodium cocal isothionate and sodium cocoa sulfate in needly form for a really cool looking shampoo bar that has absolutely amazing lather. This is one of those formulations that my friends love so much that I'm constantly making more to give out as gifts. Our fourth formulation is my Winter Solstice Facial Polish. Sodium cocal isothionate really just plays a small supporting role in this formulation. This formulation is mostly fat, so it's not going to lather up much at all. The 4% sodium cocal isothionate in this formulation simply helps with rinse off. And our 
our last formulation is my Candlelight Creamy Hand Wash. This is an example of a liquid formulation using sodium cocal isothionate. It definitely takes more time and effort to make than a hand wash that uses just liquid surfactants, but I think the end result is really worth it. All right, and that has been our sodium cocal isothionate ingredient deep dive. For more information, please make sure you are checking out the full Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on this ingredient. It's linked in the description box below. I'd love to hear about your favorite things to make with SCI in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Bye.